Hello, and welcome back to another development video. It has been exactly two years since my very first devlog, and a little more than two years since I first started working on Village of Origins. I remember starting with the baker and playing around with all the movement options, then slowly adding more hosts and sending it to my friends so they could play around with the movement and thinking, wow, it's so cool that you can switch hosts and the movement feels so fluid. Looking back on the, the game back then, it was very clunky and the game actually crashed if you spawned a host too close to a wall, but I, um, I stuck it out and I added another host, then another and another and another, incorporating feature after feature. This devlog will be a little bit different because these last two and a half months have been less about adding new features and more about finishing what was semi-completed and tidying up a few things. So here I am in a brand new save file, having just completed the tutorial. If I open up the menu, I have my five starting hosts and the 45 locked hosts, which I've talked about many times before. On the quest tab, I have every quest listed the way they'll appear when you start a new game. Every side quest and mini game is now playable and beatable, albeit in a debug world, so they'll need some tweaking after I make the real worlds. In a new game, all that starts unlocked is the main quest in each world, telling you to simply investigate for signs of your body thief, named Pseudo and then your player name. And the other quest that starts unlocked is the quest linked to the randomly generated forest. Every other quest starts off locked, showing you two semi-transparent sprites, indicating the character who unlocks the quest and a hint about what the quest might be about. So, if I've completed all the side quests and minigames, you might be wondering how far along my neutral NPCs are. Let's head over to the compendium. On the compendium, we'll go over to neutral NPCs, and all special NPCs now exist in the game in some form. There are 12 special NPCs in each of the four worlds, making a total of 48 special NPCs. These can be toggled on the compendium between the 24 quest-specific NPCs, the 16 shops, the four minigames, and just the special NPCs in general. This was a daunting task, and I am so happy it's done. I still have to make the general neutral NPCs in the four worlds, which will include police or guard type NPCs, preventing you from just wreaking havoc in the four worlds. At the bottom of general, I also have the animals listed, with an empty space for some other NPCs you'll encounter not tied directly to any of the four worlds. In the item section of the compendium, I have added all 49 consumable items in the game, all six ammo types, the five spare parts, and a good chunk of the key items. It looks a lot more polished now too. The status effect section on the compendium is also a lot more polished. You can see that it's pretty filled out and kind of evenly spaced out. I may add a couple more stats effects, but it's no longer the priority, and this is all I believe I'll need to have in the game. There's also an empty spot at the bottom right here that will be a for a feature I still need to add called Synergy that will be added at some point. <laughs> On my Hostile Enemies tab, I've added every enemy and mini boss in the game. The, the map button on the menu still doesn't do anything and will most likely be the last thing I add since it will correlate with the polished worlds. Heading back to the quest tab, when I first spoke about quests, I talked about how each row is a different type of quest, the first being the main quest and the last being the minigame, for example. I also mentioned there being interworld quests, 
and special quests, which I said I would come back to. Well, now that I'm done with the quests, I should probably go back to it. Interworld quests involve starting in one of the four worlds. For example, talking to this merchant in the Isles, who said he had a few trade deals fall through, leaving him with goods no one in the whole world would want. You, be not bound to this specific world, are tasked to go out and find people who would want the items that this merchant's selling, giving, for example, oil to Trish the mechanic in the city. To help with a more dynamic dialogue system where certain interactions are relevant to a quest, I've added a feature so that when you talk to NPCs, the game will tell you if the dialogue is quest relevant. For example, when I talk to Trish and ask how business is, it has a little exclamation mark next to it. This exclamation mark only appears after having triggered the quest, because before asking Trish how business is, is irrelevant to a quest, and you're just making conversation. This little marker will also appear as a dollar sign if there is a shop and you're able to buy things, or as an M if there's a mini game. These interworld quests are very dialogue dependent and involve hopping between worlds based on the different special NPCs in the game. The special quest type has no specific form or pattern, but involve an extra special NPC. This may be a self-aware self-checkout machine you find in the junkyard who thinks it's a human and wants to make friends, causing the player to find balloons, a crowd of people, and a catchy phrase in order to make the ad for friends sound appealing. All these 24 side quests and minigames I've added range from elaborate and ridiculous, incorporating new mechanics that only exist for this one small quest, to really straightforward. My hope is that each quest is immersive enough that you get distracted with resolving it. Then say, oh wait, what was I doing before I ran into this person who wanted to give me a quest? I want each quest to be unique and enjoyable so that people will seek out quests, rather than being like, ugh, I guess I'll go and do this other quest, which is the exact same thing, just to say they 100% the game, or just to get some more EP to buy something. I want the quests in and of themselves to be a satisfying experience. With this massive chunk of content done, as well as fixing this huge list of bugs that I found as I implemented more quests and status effects and items. These two and a half months were insane. And I am so happy I got this much done as a sort of anniversary two-year devlog, as well as my 25th devlog. I have up here on the screen a sort of final to-do list before this game can enter into a beta of some form. I have no idea how long each task will take me, but I hope that I get to end 2023 with a fully crossed out list and will get to spend my time doing bug check runs and having beta testers find issues I never even knew I had. With all this said, thank you for watching this development video. Whether you've been here since the first update or just click this video, the fact that someone is interested enough in a passion project uh, makes me happy. And I've enjoyed hearing whatever people have said about the game. And as always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.